Moya Lights. Hello guys. In this video, I'm going to explain how I learned to speak Japanese. If you haven't watched the first part of my Japanese learning journey, then I would recommend to watch it first. First of all, if you do not live in Japan or if you do not have any Japanese speaking friends, then I would recommend to use a website where you can interact, respectively, you can talk to native speakers. So in my case, I use a website which is called italki. Italki is a place where you can book a lesson with a native speaker and also it is a place where the teacher wants to help you, you know? It's not, you're not being judged. It's only, or she is only there to help you and also it is the perfect place to make mistakes and to prove your target language. Why do I like Artogi so much? I like Artogi so much because it is possible, for example, to find a teacher who shares the same interests like you. And also, it's true that you have to pay for a lesson with a native speaker. But the thing is, it really depends on the, on the teacher. For example, sometimes a lesson can be for euros or sometimes a lesson can cost 50. 15 euros it depends on the teacher so in my case yeah i often booked uh, i often uh, paid i would say 10 euro 10 euro or 12 euros but it was worth it to have one hour uh, lesson with an 80 speaker or even sometimes one hour 30 minutes it's also possible i know speaking a new language in the first time in your life it is terrifying especially when it comes to speaking Japanese, which is completely different. But I'm going to t tell you something, okay? You will fail in the beginning. You will completely fail. It's completely okay because I also failed a lot. I failed really a lot. Why? Because the thing is, we've only been listening, listening, listening and reading. So actually we've been acquiring the language, you know, acquiring new words. And so actually this is the good part about input that we have understanding of this language. We can understand the language. When we read the language, or when we read the language, it's nothing new anymore. We already know that. But we haven't learned how to speak. And I'm going to share with you guys my own experience. So when I first started um, yeah, speaking Japanese, first in my life, I only focused on making short, simple sentences. Okay? For example, Instead of saying, I am a student because I go to school, I just said, I am a student, I go to school. Why? Because Japanese is a language that, first of all, you're going to start with the, with the subordinate clause. For example, because I go to school and then afterwards, I am a student. And I can imagine that, for example, for an English native speaker, or maybe generally speaking, for an, for someone who speaks European languages or other language, it is a little bit confusing. Eh? It's a little bit difficult to understand. Also, for the brain, for the brain, it takes a lot of time to understand what's going on, and so therefore, it's easier to make short, simple sentences in the beginning. Okay, don't forget, eh? language learning it takes time. And we have to enjoy the process. We have to enjoy it. And so, in the beginning, I just said, yeah, I am a student. I go to school. I play video games. It is short, simple, but understandable. Why? Because our goal is communication, not perfection. Hello, guys. So, I'm going to show you two sentences and... So I'm going also to show you how you should make long sentences shorter and simpler. For example, in this case, I have I am learning Japanese because I want to live in Tokyo. And the Japanese translation would be Tokyo ni sumitai no de Nyongo o benkyo shitemasu. And first of all, if you start speaking Japanese the first day of your life, and let's assume you you be native speaker, for example, you speak German, French, English, which are SVO languages, subject, verb, object, and then you speak for the first time in your life an SOV language, subject, 
object and verb, then I would really recommend do not make long, complex sentences in Japanese in the beginning. Why? Because first of all, for your brain, it takes a lot of time to get used to these languages. It makes a lot of sense because you've been talking, you've been speaking your whole life an SVO language, and then suddenly you start to speak an SOV language. It is almost like the same like, you know, someone who has never been to the gym before, wants not to go, go to the gym and now wants uh, to use a lot of ways, you know, for example, bench press, and he has never done it before. This is not a good idea. Just start small, okay? Start small. Because I, I'm giving you an example. I am learning Japanese because I want to live in Tokyo, but here it is Tokyo in one to live because Japanese learning. No, so in this case, really, um, I mean, it is it is too much. It is way too much. And also, another thing is also to add that Japanese is also a language that when the context is already known, when, the, when you already know who is the subject, then you do not have to say watashiwa all the time. That's the reason why you don't see watashiwa. Huh? I mean, it's all the same like in Spanish. For example, in Spanish, when I say yo quiero comer, I want to eat, I can also say quiero comer. Huh? So in Japanese, it's also the same, something like that. Okay, so what should you do? That's completely simple. Make it shorter, make it simpler, but still with the same meaning. For example, I am learning Japanese. Watashi wa nihongo o benkyo shitemas. It's true that in this case you still have this SOV structure, but it's smaller and also for your brain it's easier to analyze, to know what is that. And so in the beginning, your brain needs to know a little information like, okay, you should do that. Okay? In the beginning, of course, nihongo. Bank your watashi wa nyongo bank your shitemas. In the beginning, your brain will be like, okay, I don't know what it is, but I'm just trying to get used to it. And again, same thing. I want to live in Tokyo. Tokyo ni sumitai. And you see, it is a lot easier, a lot easier to say. I know it may sound really a little bit weird, but trust me, I did in the beginning. It is simpler and you have a conversation. Yes. And also for your brain, in the beginning, it will get used to it. It's the same like in fitness, like in gym, you know, when you go training for the first time, in the beginning, you need to understand also the basics, how to work that. Because, so the next time when you do again, for example, bench press, then you will know, okay, it's something like that. So it will become a little bit like second nature, but it takes time. Okay, it, is, it takes time. Another example. Now I'm going to show you the second example. For example, I want to learn English because I want to see my friends who live in Canada. Canada ni sunde iru tomodachi ni aitai no de ego o benkyo shitai. And so if I have to translate it word by word, it would be Canada in live, friends, meet, I would like, want to meet because English want to study, want to learn. And so, <laughs> I'm being honest, if you tried that in the beginning, without any previous Japanese speaking experiences, no, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's impossible. So what to do again? Again, same thing, short, simpler, same meaning. So, for example, I want to learn English. I want to see my friends. Tomodachi ni aitai. Oh, for example, you can also say, wait, I'm going to copy. Watashi no tomodachi ni aitai. Again, when the subject, when the context is already known, you can also say tomodachi ni aitai. But I just add watashi no so that it also fits to the translation. And then my friends live in Canada. Watashi no tomodachi wa Canada ni sunde ilu. And again, you know, the thing is, your brain will see again the same information again. Like, how would you say? Like, subject, then object, and then verb. For example, watashi wa, a subject, e go o, English, benkyo shitai, want to learn. Or for example, 
watashi yeah okay i mean i want to see my friends actually it should be watashi wa watashi no tomodachi ni aitai but like again the subject is already known so in this case watashi no tomodachi ni so object aitai want to see or for example here watashi no tomodachi wa my friends kada ni Okay, it's not really object, but it's more like location. But I think you get a little bit the point because at the end, sundeiru, live. It's always the same pattern. pattern. And so when your brain sees a lot, when you say a often the same thing again, then eventually your brain will start to understand, okay, I know what you're trying to say. And the same thing, for example, going to the gym. When you do bench press for the first time in your life, you have no idea what to do it. But... By a little exercise, you know, by little improvements, small improvements, you will become better. And this is also how about language learn. Start small. And afterwards, you will become better. I mean, then you try ag again this new con uh, construction. But in order to be able to speak like this, you need to know the basics. Yeah, it takes time, but it's possible. And I speak from my own experiences because I failed a lot. I really failed a lot, but it's a good failure. Don't forget the process, eh? like speak, fail, be better. Speak, fail, be better. And the teacher, you know, when you listen to the teacher and when we understand what's being said, it is really safe. It gives us really like to feel like we are improving and i could remember when i heard the first time my, my my professor talking to me in japanese and when i could understand the message it was really feeling like wow that's really awesome it's really awesome but yeah about speaking and also therefore when you can understand what's being said then you will feel much comfortable to speak even though you make mistakes because like i said we are beginners mistakes are expected so in my beginning only short simple sentences i've been speaking that way like i would say maybe yeah, two months something like that i don't know really and also sometimes when you don't know what you want to say i also said ito ano yeah and you know just not to make the conversation awkward yeah, so in the beginning I failed a lot, but I also learned from my mistakes and for the next time I did better. So imagine like this way, okay, like speak, fail and be better in the next time. That's what, how I did it, okay? Yeah, so I spoke, I failed, I, I did better and also, I mean, I was really happy. To be able to have one hour conversation, basic conversation, and keep in mind, better to have a basic conversation than nothing, okay? And also additionally, additionally to I talky, I also talk to myself in Japanese. I'm going to explain why this really is so good, because when you speak to yourself in your target language, it is a really good brain exercise. You have to think in your target language and also you have to say what you see. In my case, I only describe what I see. For example, oh, okay, this is a book. This is, this is a pen, something like that. And then when there are some words I didn't know, so I was like, instead of saying, instead of saying English, like how do you say it in Japanese? I was like, I don't know that. And remember, it's the Japanese, you know? I'm going to show you an example, okay? Kore wa hon des. Kore wa kami des. Kore wa nan des ka?
Koewa Hasami des. Yes, and so therefore, it is really important that you try to describe what you see. And it is really good exercise because when there's a word you don't know, I just go to a website where you can translate. Okay, you can use Google Translate, but my personal website that I use is Womaji. It's a really good place. I just wrote down the English words and then I saw the Japanese translation. And so for the next time, when I tried again to describe what I see, I knew the Japanese words. And so therefore, talking to yourself, of course at home, okay, do that at home. Talking to yourself is really a good exercise to improve your target language. You don't have to des describe what you see. You can also imagine that there would be an interview, like you would be asking someone like, what is your name, how old are you, something like that, and someone is, is, is uh, answering. So you're talking to yourself. That's what I did additionally. Another interesting thing is that Luxembourgish is also a flexible language and also German. Hello guys, I'm going to show you how I learned to think in Japanese. So first of all, I just want to say that Luxembourg and German, I mean, if you speak one of those languages, those are really flexible languages. And I give you an example. For example, in English, you have, I am learning Japanese because I find this language interesting. So I want to say that everything which is in blue, it is a main clause. Everything which is in red is a subordinate clause. For example, in this case, I am learning Japanese. This is a main clause. Because I find this language interesting. This is a subordinate clause. And here in Luxembourgish, ich lehre Japanisch, weil ich das Spruch interessant fand. Again, with ich lehre Japanisch, this is a main clause. Weil ich das Spruch interessant fand. It's a subordinate clause. And here is now the advantage when you speak, for example, Luxembourg or German. Those are flexible languages. And so instead of saying, ich lehre Japanisch, weil ich das Spruch interessant fand, I can also say, weil ich das Spruch interessant fand, lehre ich Japanisch. And again, it is the same meaning. It has the same meaning. I didn't change anything. The only thing I changed was only the order. Because I started with the sub ordinate clause, which is in this case, weil ich das Spruch interessant fand, and afterwards I end with my main clause, lehre nicht Japanisch, and it is still the same meaning, and also the same thing for German, ich lerne Japanisch, main clause, weil ich diese Sprache interessant finde, subordinate clause, and again, weil ich diese Sprache interessant finde, subordinate clause, Lerne ich Japanisch, main clause. And this is really beautiful, this is really the advantage because it still has the same meaning. It still means in English, I am learning Japanese because I find this language interesting. Guys, I really need to know that. Can you do the same also in English? For example, instead of saying, I am learning Japanese because I find this language interesting. Can you also say, because I find this language interesting, I am learning Japanese. I need to know that. If you can do that, that in this case, just try to think like this way, because I can tell you one thing. It really helped me a lot to think in Japanese, because now I'm going to show you. Yeah? You see a translation of, wait. Yeah, so this should actually be the Japanese flag. <laughs> but yeah. So you see the, the three languages together. And now I'm going to explain to you why it is important to start with the subordinate clause and then with the main clause. And why Luxembourg and German, they really have a big advantage. Because in, in Japanese, this, this means Kono gengo wa omoshiroi to omono de watashi wa nyongo o benkyo shitemasu. And in Japanese, they always start, they always start with the subordinate clause. Kono genko wa omoshioi no de, to omo de. So this one, again. Kono genko wa omoshioi to omo no de. So the subordinate clause. 
Watashi wa Nihongo o Penkyo Stemas. So I am learning Japanese. And in Japanese, it always starts with the subway clause and then with the main clause. And you can see here, when you compare Japanese with Luxembourg and German, you can see actually it is really similar. It is really similar. I mean, weil euch das Spruch interessant fanden, lerne ich Japanisch. Weil ich diese Sprache interessant finde, lerne ich Japanisch. And also, Kono gengo wa omoshi hoi to omo no de, watashi wa nyongo benkyo stemas. And also, another thing is also that in Luxembourg as well in German, the verb is always at the end of the sentence because, okay, linguistically speaking, in subordinate cl clauses, German and Luxembourg verbs are always at the end of the sentence. And look, this is the same like in Japanese, like, weil euch das Spruch interessant fanden, fanden, or weil ich diese Sprache interessant finde, and here in Japanese, to omo, so, I mean, yeah, omo imas, it means like, I think, yeah, for example, kono genko wa omo shoi to omo, so, this language interest I find. And this is so, this is really a game changer because actually it is really similar. It is really similar. I mean, the Spruch, diese Sprache, Kono Genko, wa. And then, interessant, interessant, omo shoi. And then, fanden, finde, omo. Okay, well, no de means because. Yeah, in this case, German, Luxembourg, it starts in, at the, in the beginning. But you can see, it is almost sim it is almost one to one. It, it is really almost similar. And then, watashi wa nyongo benkyo shitimasu. Lerne japanisch, lerne japanisch. And so this is how I learned to think Japanese. Because there was one time, I always started with the sub of the clause. And grammatically speaking, it is always correct. If you are a German native speaker, I would really recommend try try to speak like this way because it is still correct. It is still it is still the same meaning, and it will help you a lot, a lot when it comes to learning Japanese. For those who speak English, French, Spanish, I, I need to know. I really need to know if you can do it like this way. Like you start with the sub of the clause and then the main clause. Just do it. Really, just do it because. If it, if it still has the same meaning, I can guarantee you, Japanese will become easier. I'm only talking about the European languages, okay? Of course, there are some languages uh, which are really similar to Japanese grammar, okay? For example, Korean. I don't speak any Korean, but it is often said that Japanese and Korean, they are really similar. I don't know that. You can comment it below, yes. But this, again... This is really, this is a big game changer. I can tell you guys, just try it. This is a really good combination. I talk here and also try to speak to yourself at home, you know, and also try to think a little bit like your talk language. But for example, by changing the way how you speak your native language, but it still has the same meaning. For example, Luxembourg and German, those are really flexible languages. Okay. And so in Aitoki, I booked lessons with different teachers. Because the thing is, if you only stay with one teacher, you will start to develop a certain comfort zone. I don't want to say that comfort zones are bad. No, of course not. But the point is only that you will not be afraid anymore. But in my case, I did differently. I booked lessons with different teachers. And I was talking about different things. So that I will also know how different people would speak. Because not everyone speaks the same way, you know. There are some people, they are easier to understand. There are some people, they are difficult to understand. And so, yeah. And that's why I booked lessons with different teachers. And also, which is really important, that's also how I did. Talk about different things. Of course, you can talk about the things that you like. But sometimes, it is also good to ask, for example, your teacher. What is his hobby? What does he like? Or what does she like? Something like that. To improve your listening skills. And also, 
maybe if there are some words you don't understand, then ask in Japanese, like, what does that mean? I didn't understand that, you know? Because, as I say, in the beginning, you will fail. There will be some words you don't understand, but at least you know how to act. Ask, what does it mean? What is that? What is that? What is that? You know, it is really important to talk about different things. To have different teachers. Because the thing is, when you have a comfort zone, yeah, then you feel a little bit like you, you don't have... How should, how should I say? I don't like really... I don't like comfort zones, okay? That's an easier way to say it. Yes. And so... Also, do not forget, okay? When we are trying to improve our speaking skills, please do not neglect your listening skills. Because, like I said, you know, about inputs, we are... We are learning of target, our target language because we want to live our life in this target language. So please, keep listening to Japanese, keep reading things that you like. Because the thing is, right now, we are trying to speak. And the thing is, we listen to something. We understand a lot what's being said. But then, this time, do it a little bit differently. Like, try to imitate what you hear. Try to copy, try to imitate what's being said. Okay? i give an example. For example, English. When someone is saying, what are you waiting for? In this case, I understand what's being said, but then I would stop it and I would try to imitate, like, what are you waiting for, you know? I think this technique is called shadowing. I don't know really know. I think it's called shadowing. So this is another thing which, which also can improve your speaking skills. You know, when you watch again things that you like, and this time it's completely different because you understand a lot what's being said, Try to shadow, try to imitate what's being said, okay? It is really a good way to improve your speaking skills. Okay, so that's how I did, okay? So, yeah, I talk I talk to a lot of sp uh, native speakers. And then, you know, when you keep doing that, I mean, if you use the, the, um, my advice, the, eventually you will reach a point where speaking Japanese is not really that difficult anymore. Where you start to understand how this language works and how to think in this language and so therefore this is where this language becomes easier and easier like second nature but keep in mind we are only talking to teachers and so this is the next step to improve your speaking skills go to a web another website where you cannot book a lesson with native speakers, but where you talk to native speakers who are not teachers. This is a different feeling. Because the thing is, in our talkie, of course, this is the beginning. At this stage, we are talking to people who are patient, who are there to help you. But when you reach a certain level, you know, a certain level of your speaking skill, then just go to a different place. For example, VR chat, or for example, I don't know, uh, other places where you can talk to people who are not teachers, it's really a good experience because in this case, you're talking to people who are speaking this language every day and who are not patient and who are not going to slow down or going to use simple words because this, again, is a different experience. In my case, in VR chat, I was talking to native speakers Japanese. At the beginning, I was afraid, but then suddenly, you know, because I understood a lot what's being said, and also because I was able to speak, it became better and better and better. I even learned a lot of new words, new slang, something like that. And that's really important, okay? So in the beginning, I talk here. We're going to talk to teachers who are there to help us. After that, when you have reached a certain level, they go to different places, you know, where you can interact with people. Or for example, if you have also some Japanese speaking events in your in your country or in a place where you live, just go there. For example, here in Luxembourg, every month there's one Japanese activity where I go there to practice my Japanese and it is so worth it. It is really worth it because the thing is, you know, I'm talking to people who are actually who are actually not teachers. We're actually just people from the everyday life, you know? But it is a different experience because the thing is, you live, you live in this language, you live really right now. And also, it is face to face, you see this person. In my case, you know, this activity. Or for example, VR chat 
It was so interesting. I can remember I was talking to someone who was the same age as me and we were talking about traveling. I was talking to him about my traveling experience in Iceland, in Japanese, with a friend of mine. And this person, he was not slowing down, no. He was talking with me at natural speed. And I really liked that. And also, another thing, another piece of advice I would like to give to you is, if you have the chance, please go to Japan. If you have the chance. It is really worth it. Because when I was in Japan, this was completely different. It was out of my comfort zone. Why? Because I was in a place where not everyone could speak English. And also I need to learn how to buy a train ticket, how to go to the grocery store, how to buy clothes, you know, everything Japanese. And this is why I think it's a really good idea to at least go to Japan to practice your Japanese. Because the thing is, you're in this country, you're, you're living in, in Japan, you're there. And you have to speak, it is full immersion. And also, not everyone is a teacher. I can tell you, in my experience, not everyone was patient. Not everyone was using simple words. And also, because not everyone could speak English, and therefore I was forced to speak Japanese. I w I've been in Japan for one month, because I went to a um, language school, and in one month I improved a lot. I improved really a lot, really, really a lot. And also, I mean, I also took part in a lot of different events. When I was there, I took, I took part in events where I was the only foreign person. But I didn't care. I only spoke Japanese. I kept speaking. I kept speaking. That's why I'm telling you, when you go to Japan, full immersion, this is actually the stage where I would say you reach it. Because you're there, you have to speak Japanese every day. Don't be afraid. Of course, there were some moments I didn't understand anything, but then I asked in Japanese, can you repeat it again? Can you say it slowly? In Japanese, okay? And I can guarantee you guys, this will really change your life. For example, in Japan, when I was in Japan, I also went to an internet cafe, and because I always wanted to try, to try it. And so I booked a, a room for myself, in Japanese, I was afraid, but I, I thought like, just do it. There were some words I didn't understand. I asked him, what does that mean? What did, and then he replied to me, use simpler words. And this one month in Japan, when I was in Japan, one month, it changed completely my life, really. I this, I, it was out of my comfort zone, but I was like, no, you have to do that. And after one month, because you know, we're in Japan, you hear that place every time. But don't forget about our input phase. We are already well prepared because before going to Japan, before I went to Japan, I already listened a lot to Japanese. I already read a lot of Japanese. Nothing is new. And also before I, before going to Japan, I already had a lot of lessons with native speakers on Italki. I spoke to myself in Japanese. I mean, I even... Um, spoke to some people in VR chat and so therefore actually there's nothing new of course it is crazy because I was alone I was completely alone but it is worth it so therefore if you have the chance just do it do it I did it alone of course you can do it with friends but I think alone is it depends on the person it depends really on the person if you really like be if you really like solo traveling then just do it if you don't like solo traveling then don't do it yeah and yeah, and that's how I learned to speak Japanese. It's the same process, huh? Speak, fail, be better. Again, again, and again. And then eventually you will come to a level where you speak, you fail a little bit, and you become better a little bit. Why? Because, you know, when you don't fail uh, too much, then actually there's nothing to improve. And yes. That's how I became, I don't want to say fluent, but that's how I'm able to speak very good Japanese. The problem is fluency. What does fluency even mean? I mean, there are some people, they have their own definition of fluency. For me, fluency means that I'm able to talk to people. And also keep in mind, our goal is communication, not perfection. I speak Japanese, sometimes I make a little mistakes, but I don't care. Really, this is really important. 
I make some little mistakes, but I don't care. I don't really care. Because at least I can speak. This is what many people often forget. That when you make little mistakes, they think like they are failures. But they often forget that they can only speak Japanese. So be, be grateful. Be grateful that you're able to speak such a beautiful and yet so distant language. I don't want to say difficult, but different. Yes. That's how I learned Japanese. Vielen Messe, weil ihr geguckt habt. Und wir sehen uns demnächst. Adi.